Hey, what's up and welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, I just wanted to walk through, do an overview of this lightsaber project. So we're in Fusion 360 and we're just gonna kind of walk through the design a little bit. This is sort of the master assembly. This is where all the pieces live, all the electronics and stuff. So let's take a look at the browser and just kind of inspect it. So the main hilt is in this hilt component. So uh, what I like to do is like to just activate the component. Uh, you can drop this down and we can say right click isolate and then we can just focus on the hilt itself. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. Now the hilt itself is uh, five different parts. So we can work, uh, we can just hover over these to see what they are. The pommel, that's like the thing at the end of the hilt. The speaker is what fits inside there. And then we have this thing called the heat sink. Um, but I also like to refer to it as the power cell because that's where the battery is. So the power cell, the battery goes into this area. We got the clamp. Two um, panel mount buttons are going to be attached here, uh, and a lot of wires and stuff pass through here. Then we have the barrel. The barrel is where the actual uh, uh, microcontroller is going to be. So that's where the barrel is. That's what it is. And then we have the last part, which is called the blade emitter. This is where the polycarbonate tube actually gets press fitted into. Cool. So I got some couple. I got a couple of cross sections to take a look at how these pieces sort of uh, are fitted together. Starting with the pommel, there is a custom thread. Um, so it's using the thread tool, and it uh, has a little bit of a clearance between those two uh, kind of joining coils. So we have about a 0.2 millimeter clearance, and that's uh, adjustable and editable in the feature, the coil feature. So you can change that. You could also get a look of um, exactly uh, the thread count by actually stepping into the part. So let's say we want to do the pommel. I'll activate that, right click, isolate. That just gives me what I want. I could also hit this little home thing so that I can revolve around it, even turn off the section else if I want. So down here in the timeline, it's set up as a group. I'll expand that by clicking the button. And then here's all the things that kind of make it up. It's only one thread object and that's this right here. I'll right click edit feature and you can see uh, the pitch is 2.5, the revolutions are two, there's the diameter, and you can get the section size and other little things like the section type, wh whether it's in the inside or outside. You can adjust all that stuff, but uh, that's what it is right now. If you wanted to do some tolerance adjustments, uh, you can come in here and kind of update that. Real quick, since I'm in the pommel thing, um, all the sketches are, for the most part, labeled. Some of them aren't but most of them are, and you can kind of step through them and see exactly what makes what. So if you wanted to update the diameter and maybe some features don't uh, follow through with it, you can just step into the sketch and find out how it works. So um, that's what I like to do. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more digestible uh, using uh, right click, isolate, and activate component, that sort of stuff. And now if you've not seen that, click on this cog wheel and say hide all inactive features. That seems to work really well for me. So I have it on always. All right, so let's step back into the hilt and uh, actually right click unisolate. I need to get into the habit of doing that a lot, but here we go. All right, cool. So that is the hilt and we talked about the thread. Well, let's look at some other pieces from it. Let's isolate it again and then just do a cross section uh, to see how the clamp attaches uh, to the power cell, which is this guy here, and the barrel, which is this guy here. So how does that happen? Well, if we look at the clamp itself, let's just do that, right click, isolate, um, and then we'll activate it. And then we'll even open it here so we can see. All right, those are all the features that uh, kind of make it happen. I'll turn off the section else so we can see inside. So instead of doing, uh, instead of doing coils, um, I went for this sort of clamp design. So you'll see that there's this giant, uh, there's a split right down the middle of the cylinder. There's these two tabs with holes, and this is where a screw and a lock nut uh, will be fastened into and will secure, uh, it will clamp, this clamp will clamp onto the heat sink or the power cell, which is where the battery fits, and the barrel where the PCB fits. So that's how this thing works. Now you can actually, f now there's a one, uh, is it one millimeter? There's a one millimeter distance between these two surfaces. And this gives you enough room to kind of pull it apart and fit these two parts in there. Okay, this is actually a good this is actually a good uh, thing here. So you can see that there is the a bit of a uh, triangular uh, sort of circular um, feature that is let's look at it here that is um, a triangle and it gets kind of swept along the 
circumference of this uh, inner diameter. But you notice that it kind of has a flushed area here where it kind of clears out. And that's a bit of a register, that's a, it's by design. So if you look at the the uh, the other parts, you can see how they're, um, it, well, it's ghosted, but we'll look at it a little bit. You can kind of see how there's a little bit of clearance between there. And that's just there so that these pieces cannot be twisted. They will always be locked in place. Uh, so I, I, before I did it this way, uh, this feature would sweep along the entire thing and you would able to kind of rotate it because clamping this uh, didn't have sort of a way to key it. So this is uh, my way of keying it so that it doesn't twist uh, during use. And then um, if we highlight the hilt, then we should be able to see all of it. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of look at the heat sink or the power cell and take a look at how that works. So you'll see that there's an indentation here um, on this edge here. So there, it's kind of reorient. There we go. So you can see how this sweeps along, right? And then it kind of becomes flush here. And this is just where that kind of keyed area goes. So if I bring back the clamp and then I even do that, you can get a better look at how um, those indentations uh, are, are fitted for that feature. And there's a little bit of clearance between them. If we do a section analysis, you can see exactly how how much space there is between them. I believe it's about 0.2 millimeters and a 0.4 millimeter for the for the um, for the actual uh, cylinder. And a, and a quick way to find out how that how to do that, you can just select uh, a surface, hold down Shift, and then select another surface, and you'll get a minimum distance. Here's the minimum distance there. And if you want to update any of those, we can step into the design and and do it. If you want to do it really quick, you could just press and pull it. That should work fine. I'll hit Q on my keyboard and just press. Uh, these two faces, and then I have the option to pull them back or forward, however I'd like. Right now, there's some might some things might break, so just be aware of that. I'll hit escape. All right, cool. So that's how the clamp works. Now the barrel has the pretty much the same geometry going on there for uh, keying into the clamp. Um, and then the last part we'll look at is the blade emitter. The blade emitter has pretty much the same coil um, setup. Uh, as the pommel, so you can actually put the pommel here and the blade emitter over there because they're, they're using the exact same dimensions. Uh, but the blade emitter itself has um, some some neat features and things like that uh, that print without any supports. So if we look at the very bottom here, this surface here is actually how it prints and it actually prints upright like that. That's how it prints. So this is the bottom and this will be the very top. Um, so you can see how there's a very, very aggressive chamfer or drafted angle. This is like 112 degrees, I believe, something like that. Pretty crazy. Uh, but for the rest of them, these right here are about um, 60 or maybe even 45 degree tape uh, drafted angles. So they should print uh, just fine without any support material. Um, these 90 degree overhangs here um, are not a problem either. Most printers with active cooling fans can print this quite fine. It's even thick as well. It's pretty thick. I think it's about three millimeters. Yeah, three and some change millimeters there. So uh, there's that. And then these fins here um, can be, uh, you know, printed without any supports as well. And if they're sharp, you can fill them out if you'd like. Again, we can use uh, our timeline, activate component, and right click isolate to kind of uh, just get ourselves. There are some features that are ghosted out, but I guess we don't need them. So I'll delete those later. Other than that, though, that is the main hilt stuff. So that's how the hilt's um, working. Um, just a note about some of these objects that are um, that have two two tone colors. Um, if you uh, want to print this with a uh, with a single extruder, just merge them. Um, so for example, the clamp. So if I wanted to, well, let's unisolate it and then isolate it again. <laughs> So if you wanted to uh, print this with a single extrusion, I would recommend merging them. I've already done this. Um, the STLs are already ready to go, but if you modified the, you know, if you modified the solids and you'd like to make your own STLs, be sure to merge them. So um, you can just uh, bring up their sketch toolbox and say uh, combine, combine or merge, whatever you want to call it, and then just select the bodies, and you will see that they are merging and if we flip on over here you can see it has that cool little indentation sort of feature um, so you want to join them as the operation hit ok and that will create one solid body that you can export right click stl so if you did change some of the tolerances here or you got rid of something or you added something else um, i definitely recommend and you're doing single extrusion i recommend doing that if not um, you know just make sure that they are separate bodies um, and that you export them out uh, 
the right way. What is the right way? Well, there really isn't a wrong way to do it, but here's how I do it. Um, I export this piece out individually, and then I export this piece out individually as well. Save it as TL. And then um, when you bring them into your slicing uh, software, you'll do it from there because every slice software is different. Okay, so that's the hilts. Let's talk about the electronics next. So I'm going to hide that. Actually, I got to right click on it, say unisolate. Oh, I guess it's already unisolated. Excellent. So let's hide that and open up the electronics. I'll activate the main assembly. So these are all the uh, components, electronics that. Uh, are in this design. They are available to download individually on our GitHub repo. Check the links in the description. I probably should have said that first, but hey. I really hope that folks use these components as they are one-to-one -one representation of the real Eagle CAD design as these are straight from Eagle CAD. This is the uh, prop maker wing and uh, this was um, just exported out of Eagle using the Eagle Diffusion 360 features. So uh, all these trim pots and caps and chips, they're all pretty one-to-one -one accurate. Got the reset button here, we got all the mounting holes, very nice. So uh, a part of that, we also have um, the Adafruit M4 feather, which is this guy here. And a lot of the feathers kind of have the same format, so um, you can use whatever, you can reuse this if you'd like. Um, so what this, um, this stuff here is, these little uh, sort of cylindrical Mounts are just kind of brackets that uh, that get attached with machine screws. I don't have the machine screws in this CAD design, um, but I do have them listed in the learn guide. Another board that's kind of new that I don't usually use in my designs is a micro USB breakout. This one is added here because of the, the way that the micro USB on the feather is, is over here. I actually need it to be over there. Um, and for other reasons like um, this uh, NeoPixel thing being on this orientation, and the blade emitter itself being on that side, you wanna, I needed to kinda uh, choose and, and make sure that uh, the, uh, the wires kinda make sense, right? So in order to recharge the battery and, and, and um, access uh, the, the micro USB port for programming and charging, um, I needed to break that out and make it more accessible. So when you unscrew the barrel, I'm sorry, when you unscrew the emitter, you have access to that micro USB port. So you are going to have to have some wires um, that come from here, from these pins, and, and then I kind of use a uh, another um, mic, micro USB cable kind of extension that I cut that gets uh, attached from here and routes over to these pins here. So that's sort of a way to break out your micro USB. It's nice if you need your microcontroller inside embedded in your project and you need to move your micro USB instead of redesigning your whole PCB use a breakout like this. So um, a panel mounted USB uh, would uh, take up more real estate because we are going to have a lot of wires pass through uh, this cylinder. Uh, so that's why I went with this option. And it's secured with machine screws. There's mounting holes in the back here uh, to tap those holes and actually get some, uh, some screws in there. You could also optionally use threaded inserts if you'd like. You'd have to increase the diameter of these holes, but you could totally do that. All the sketches are there to do so. Uh, so we got the feather, we got the prop maker wing, we got a micro USB, uh, micro USB breakout, and we also have these 16 millimeter panel mounted buttons. So these panel mounted buttons are, um, I measured them with my calipers and uh, referenced uh, the data sheets, so they're pretty accurate. Um, this one here is an RGB button. It's actually a, a shorter profile than the regular LED buttons that have just one single color. This is the RGB uh, style and they have a shorter profile so make sure that uh, whatever button you use isn't long isn't too long to where it'll clash and it won't fit inside um, of this here clamp because that's where all the buttons are actually mounted to so that's how much space you have in between there this is a 400 a 4400 milliamp lipo battery it's nice and beefy it's actually two uh it's a two uh, 2200 milliamp batteries that are balanced in, uh, you know, in this package. So you get a lot of battery out of that one. And the last component is this 40 millimeter diameter speaker. Um, there's a few of these different styles. There, are, most of them have the same features or the same specs, as in, um, you know, three watts or four ohms. Uh, but uh, the diameters stay the same. But it's normally the height that changes. No, uh, sometimes um, different 
different manufacturers use uh, different uh, s- uh, sort of magnet drivers, and they'll be different. But this is the one that uh, you can just measure it out and make sure that the pommel fits or that it fits within the pommel. Uh, so that's why I modeled it like that. Um, so you can see as a cross section that there's just a little bit of clearance between the bottom of this battery and the metal part of the speaker driver. And if you're wondering if there's like uh, some sort of interference or something with the speaker, um, not really that I have noticed uh, from usage. Um, so I think it's okay. You could shield it better somehow, maybe by putting some sort of uh, thing in between here and then elongating this design. But I just didn't see it uh, as a as a problem or an issue, so it worked out pretty well. All right, so that is the electronics in the hilt. Um, the feather is in its own little component here, um, just because it's like its own it's its own thing. Uh, it has quite a few boards in it, and um, the uh, there's the two separate sort of uh, brackets. So we can see here by opening this up, we have uh, access to the prop maker wing, the M4 Express, and then these two mounting bits that are in their own components. And then here's the micro USB breakout that was kind of added out there. You'll notice in the timeline that um, there's several different components in here because this is sort of a you know uh, an assembly of components. So you can step into those as you need to. So um, the next part of it is just um, looking at the joint. So the way that these parts are uh, joined are using joints. So with joints, um, you can right click, edit joint and see exactly how it's working. Um, you, you essentially pick an edge or a surface and you tell it to go to another edge or surface and then you can apply offsets. So here we have a few offsets. Uh, and we can change them as we'd like. Um, so this is where the feather is, so I'm changing that one. And they're all labeled as well. You'll notice that there are joints in several different um, uh, areas of the of the assembly. So here we have the, sort of the master joints, uh, the feather mount, micro USB, red button, LED buttons, battery and speaker are all here. And then inside the hilt, there are more joints. These are the joints that are are pertaining to the actual 3D printed parts, not the electronics. So you got the pommel, the clamp, the emitter, and the heat seek. So that's how those are joined. And they are just uh, set up as rigid types, so they don't really move. Um, they just stay wherever uh, we assign them to via the uh, component, uh, via the thing that we clicked on. So in this case, you can see that this is like an edge that I selected and brought it in. And here's the second piece that it attaches to, and that one, all right? Cool. So that's how that works. All right, and then I believe inside the feather there are more joints. It's just the feather wing, that's the only joint in there. So there you go, that is a quick kind of overview of the hilt design. I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, anything about it, questions, let me know. Um, this uh, design is available to download as a, uh, as a step file, as a Fusion 360 file, um, and the STLs are all over the place too. Uh, so there you go. Let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you in the next one.